So you got a Sony camera, this is the a6300 shooting on the a7 III and you shoot YouTube videos like this. You can't see what you're filming because you don't have a flippy screen, so you need a monitor. This is the Feel World F6 and we all know what this is a complete ripoff of. If you don't, here it is. This is my review on it. So if you've been watching me a while, you know I use different mono, so why did I buy this? Honestly, I hadn't really planned on buying another mono. The one I was using right now, the Viltrux DC50, has started to show signs of failure. Everything was kind of appearing too hot in there, and I don't mean literally hot, I mean like the exposure. On the monitor, it was showing it a lot more exposed or overexposed than it actually was being shot at, so it's really hard to know what's exposed and what's not when you're kind of looking at a mono and it doesn't look right. So I picked up a different one, and I got this one, which is the, uh, Feel World F6. I picked it up on a whim. It was one of the most well-reviewed ones on Amazon and it's one I've been looking at for a while. So I'd really love a small HD monitor, that little five inch one, but I just can't fathom spending the amount of money that it costs to buy one. So I picked up this and yes, it's a complete ripoff and it even has that little mount that small HD has as well that lets you sit it right on top of your camera. Like that. It comes packaged in a nice box. It feels heavy when you pick it up. I honestly picked it up like in the packaging from Amazon and it was, I was kind of surprised. I thought, what is this? Because I didn't expect a monitor to be quite this heavy. But it's because they pretty much give you everything you could possibly need in the box, which is really nice. Sometimes when you buy a monitor, you gotta buy like a battery, a charger, you gotta buy the cables. It just comes with the monitor, that's it. And not the case with this. You get everything you need with this, or at least with this kit I did. So inside the box, ooh. Comes with a battery, comes with a battery charger, comes with a cable that connects your Sony camera directly to the monitor, comes with a mini HDMI cable, comes with a protective frame, comes with a sunshade, comes with a monitor, and comes with a complete clone small HD bracket, which is actually made of metal and good. And then instructions, but no one uses those. It even comes with a packet of half-eaten biscuits. It's really dry. I think those biscuits are stale. So this is the monitor. I've got the battery already attached. The nice thing about this mount is on each side of here, on the top, on one side, and on the bottom, there's threaded mounts for you to be able to put this in whichever way you want. I want to use it exactly like the small HD one. So I screw it in the side. Shoe mount on the bottom there, so it sits right on top of your camera. And then you also have another shoe mount here, so you could slide on a microphone if you wanted to use that at the same time. Very nice. Buttons on the top. Ports galore on the side, HDMI in. The nice thing about this as well is you can buy a charger that allows you to use it plugged in all the time. You don't have to just use batteries. That's a nice thing. Bottom, you have a headphone jack if you wanted to plug in headphones and a USB upgrade as well for firmware upgrades in the future. Just gonna set this up so you can see. To turn it on, just click and hold the power button on the top here. There you go, it comes on. Five inch monitor screen is made of plastic but the plastic feels really high quality. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels like a solid monitor. It's got that plastic noise to it, uh, but it doesn't feel plastic. This mount here is made of metal and that feels solid and it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere when it's screwed on there. A five inch monitor with a 1080p screen in there and it's crystal clear, it really is. Way better than the Viltrox one, which was also 1080p, which you can see I'm using right here. Uh, but this is a much cleaner, much clearer image and Everything that looks on the screen looks exactly the same on the monitor. So there is no difference in colors, color temperature, uh, exposure. You can set all that too if you wanted to, uh, but it, the image that I'm getting on the back of the screen looks exactly the same as on the monitor, which is a really good thing. The monitor has a lot of things you can do with it aside from just seeing what's on the screen. I'm not gonna talk about all of those features. I'm gonna talk about the ones that I use and the ones that you will likely probably use as well. Ones that your Sony camera already has and you wanna be able to use on the monitor too. So. They are focus peaking. It has it built in, it displays in red. When your focus peaking is turned on, it shows you what's in focus. It has a histogram, which you can see I've got on here already. So it shows you what your levels are really at, what's exposed, if there's anything underexposed. It has safe zones set up. So you can see right here, I've got red lines on here. My safe zone set to about 85% right now. You also have safe zones when it comes to anamorphic. You can do widescreen, 80, 85, 90, 95, and 100% safe zones. So you just kind of know what your filming is gonna be viewable. It has exposure zebras showing you what's overexposed, which is very nice. And it has mirroring and flip modes as well if you wanna mirror your image or flip your image upside down, like this. And then the other really nice thing I liked is it has custom buttons, kinda of like your Sony camera does. F1, 2, 3, and 4, and you can sign those to whatever you want them to be. In my case, F1, when I turn it on, focus assist is now on. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kinda of see it. So what's red is in focus, 
F2, I haven't changed that one, but it goes to some trippy false colors thing. I have no idea what that's for. F3 is for a histogram, you can see it just there. And then F4 is overexposure. So let's see if you can see there. I wonder if the camera's picking that up. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but on the screen just here, the zebras are showing, showing that the window over here is completely blown out, completely overexposed. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about this mono because First impressions, initial impressions are it's really good, really high quality, and it has a ton of things in it which I'm really impressed with for the amount of money that it cost. I think it was 240 Canadian, which is probably like 180 US. I'll put the links down below if you want to check it out. If you have any other questions or comments about this, just uh, drop them in the comment section down below and I'll uh, respond and try and answer them if I can. That's it really, I just wanted to tell you about this mono. Real quick video today, um, impressed with it and it's definitely worth the amount of money that it costs. It's a one-stop kit, it comes with everything you need. Normally you buy all that stuff separately. This comes with everything in the box, so uh, yeah, if you want it, links down below. If you like this video, you know what to do. Subscribe down below, like, all that stuff. Yep, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.